are back in America. Travis has been gone for a while. I just got back from Mexico. So we are back on the Sandcast, people, here in the United States of America. And uh, this episode is brought to you by Wilson, of course, our favorite ball. They got a new ball now out on tour, so you guys got to check that out when it comes out, I believe, in December. And also, shout out to uh, my sponsor here, Monster Hydro. It's the new thing in sports drinks. Fueling you to a bronze medal. It, it really did. <laughs> <laughs> but more Congrats. importantly, oh, thank you, thank you. More importantly, we got our man here, Theo Brunner. Welcome back to the Welcome show. To oh, the no, show. Your first Welcome, time. first time. First time. time. Yeah. First thinking, time. I keep thinking it's your second or third time on here. I feel like. I think we tried to get you on. We tried, yeah, we yeah. tried and failed a couple times. So <laughs> schedule conflicts. You know. We live way too far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> way too far. Minutes. Yeah, yeah, it was twelve minutes. It's one of the best parts of off season is that like everybody's super available because during season we'll always schedule them, and then the last minute people will be like, uh, I have like a physio, I have a practice, I have a gym, and I have like two free minutes today, and yeah. you can't do it. But off season, everybody's like, "Well, I, I don't have anything to do for three months, so yeah. I can I can make." You have it. a line out the door <laughs> in the off season. <laughs> yeah. But now me and Theo have kids, so that's kind of a yeah, game changer. It's an issue. We have a podcast baby now. We do. <laughs> Downstairs. <laughs> so far, she hasn't cried during any of the shows. Yeah. But yeah. Game changer. How's uh? So we were talking earlier before the show started that this is like your first true off season in a good bit. How uh, how is it? I feel like everyone still like tries to figure out like what to do with themselves during the off season or what the balance is. Yeah, it's it's been good. Um, I've just I've had some injury type stuff going on the last couple of years, so I'm finally able to spend time in the gym, kind of do real simple movements and get the essentially the rehab and work in that I've needed to. Apart from that, yeah, just hanging out with the family. Daughter's 13 months now, so it's a lot of fun to play with her. Um, and then just kind of brainstorming and figuring out what I'm going to do after volleyball, which I spent a lot of time on and had very little success uh, figuring <laughs> out. Um, I'm also doing a little bit of coaching here and there. I've done a couple. I did a clinic uh, back in New Jersey um, in October, and I'm coaching the USC men's club team right now. So that's a couple Whoa. nights a week, um, Tuesday, Thursday. And then there's going to be like four or five tournaments nice. uh, in, in, the, in 2020. So. Yeah, just kind of testing the waters, see if see if it's something for me. Yeah, how how do you like it so far? Because I know that coaching is always it's it's, hit or miss. It's fun. It's hit or miss. It's yeah. I'm kind of trying out all different age groups. Um, I think probably I would want to work with college age or older uh, if I do end up coaching in the future. But it's been great. Like USC club, a bunch of cool guys. A lot of them are. I mean, pretty much the whole team probably good enough to have played D1 somewhere. Um, and they're, it's club, so they're there because they want to be. So I don't have to, I don't have to discipline. Right, I'm not, I'm not right. the best disciplinarian anyway. So, <laughs> but I don't really have to because they all want to be there. They all want to learn. So it's been awesome. It's been yeah. a really easy, easy step. So did you go through like Jeff Nagard and the whole team, the indoor team to get that gig or like how no. does that work? Um, so I think they're pretty much just like a private organization, Ooh, to my understanding. Uh-huh. So, so I, it's actually a weird way that I got it. I grew up playing with a guy, Nick Lyapunov, in Connecticut. Um, we played grass, indoor all the time. He kind of helped me catch the bug for volleyball. He has two sons that went to USC. One of them's still there on the club team. They needed a coach, and he hit me up. So huh. and I was like, oh, you know, I want to test out coaching, so it ended up working out. So I feel like that would be a pretty good segue to getting in with the, the USC team, especially because Nygaard's the coach, which he followed, or you followed a very similar career path to... Jeff, in terms of being really good indoors, having a lot of success there, and then coming out to the beach. Yeah, yeah, and th- that's how I kind of look at it. I'm hoping to win the championship um, <laughs> in uh, and then rub it in April. Nygaard's face. Yeah, like, and I just you guys be do? like, yeah, hundred <laughs> grand. You how would like a champion right like here? Like a club <laughs> team fair against uh, like quote unquote real division one team like I don't really know I never played indoor so I don't know what the talent gap would be uh I would say I mean in general they would probably get hammered pretty good I would be willing to guess our starting team could hang with some some d1 teams maybe not the cream of the crop right but I would bet the the lower ranked uh teams I I think they could play well and 
probably beat. But but it's so weird because when you're, I'm like really far removed from indoor now, so yeah. I feel like my frame of reference is all off. Like now yeah. when I see them playing, it's like, it's just hard to judge like how good they are and everything. Good or bad? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. The game changed. Or, yeah. yeah. When I go back and watch indoor, I'm I'm like so confused. I'm like, God, these kids. I think they're so much better than we were. And then I look, I'm like, wait, yeah, no. Because the guys that I'm playing with, a few of them are still on the national team, and they're just like yeah, that much better. Like, yeah. It's crazy. But, yeah, it is funny going back. I always think when I watch indoor, I'm like, I'm, I'm watching, I'm like, that's a double. <laughs> I know. Call it. What is this yeah. game? is so ugly. <laughs> I was. I went and watched. Um, so Delaney's sister plays at St. Mary. She's the libero, and so we were watching them. They were in town playing LMU on Saturday, I think. And every time a play happened, I just looked at Delaney. I'm like, "There's no rules. There's no rules. Right, yeah. You can catch. You can throw it. You can triple contact. Yeah. And no one cares." Yeah. <laughs> Definitely different. Yeah. But beach is kind of going that way in some ways. Like yeah, I, I hate it. Me, we people like me balls. can sit on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I always laugh. Like, but I'm serious. I've never been called out of maybe I don't know a thousand like handset For effort. Sure. I don't do it that much, but I will handset FIVB. I've never been called, and I've had so many just horrible, horrible sets. But as long as you do it somewhat quickly, mm-hmm. yeah, they just won't blow the whistle. Yeah. So. But then, yeah, juxtapose that to the AVP. I'll have a pretty good set, and they immediately blow it. I'm just like, all right, yeah. Back to bump setting. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's funny what makes them call certain things too, because when like you could have one come out like so when we were playing Japan and China, Mike Bo got called three straight times on a lift. Yeah. And uh, and it comes out like perfectly clean, and then like you'll have these like Russian guys out there like setting it like two feet over their head and just like chucking the crap out mm-hmm. of it. Yeah. It's yeah. Awful. They go for the international. I think it's being square, quick. And then no like downward movement. Yeah. So I think if if there's any kind of catch and then throw, then they're really tight. If it spins yeah. at all, they'll call it. But otherwise, yeah, they want you just like I always joke like you could just have two forks and just stab the ball <laughs> and they wouldn't call yeah, it. Like, totally. <laughs> I feel like uh, my hands have got like when I was younger, and I think when I first came out on AVP, I would I would dish a lot like super deep. And nowadays, my I feel like I'm like always you in got a some rush. Fast ones, yeah. I'm always in a yeah. rush to let go of it. Because I'll still catch it deep, but if it's low, then you can't release it up high. Yeah. you got to catch it low and release it low. Yeah. Like, so my hands, I, I feel like they're kind of ugly nowadays. Like, they are still clean. Ah. Might not look as smooth you as still maybe still set everything but. from everywhere. So. Right, yeah. It's true, but it's and, funny uh, how my hands, like I've had to change it for that yeah. purpose. Like, yeah. I don't care if it spins now. Just... Don't hold it. <laughs> but that video, by the way, was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I saw you posted it on your story. Yeah. When I did it, maybe I was you like, thought the net was closer than it was. Yeah, when I did and it, and you also I was thought like, the net was like charging at you or something. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. that was full on, like. <laughs> <laughs> that was. I, was I like chuckled a, at that one. <laughs> I think I definitely thought the net was closer to where to me, and then I. I think I just wanted it to be fast and like clean yeah so i fully like sold out <laughs> sideways for it <laughs> like tried to stay square because if i would have like turned with it yeah. i think it yeah would have spun sure. or they would have called it <laughs> so i just got real stiff with it i was <laughs> dying it was my, it my felt, favorite i thought it was like a sweet set when i did it it and was when i watched set. after it was i mean it was a perfect set <laughs> yeah. let's be honest <laughs> but <laughs> always but I thought it looked cooler when I did it. And then I, <laughs> then I saw it on film. I was like, ah, it yeah. was a little dramatic. <laughs> Gabby responded. She was dying. She was like, "What? How did I miss that the first time around?" Well, why did he drop? By the way, it was like a it was a perfect, perfect set. set, and he and we were. Well, he was Alex, yeah, was, Alex pulled a lot. Yeah, too lazy to jump. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, it's Trevor, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You can pull on Trevor. His head is kind of more of a slap. I've enjoyed your and Trevor's uh, Instagram (laughs) cyberbullying. Yeah, he's been having a field day after, um, as if, like, it's not painful enough reliving that Hawaii. uh, Oh, yeah. I mean, it was an awesome tournament, but the way it ended is it still doesn't sit well at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And, yeah, so, of course, Trevor takes every opportunity. I think there was, like, two weeks straight where every post – with, with me included or not, he would just make some comment about the freeze, put the little <laughs> freezy face. 
And yeah, so we get a back and forth going, but it's all in good fun. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. But you so. you had a bigger comeback on him without the freeze in the finals of Seattle. Yeah, exactly. That's what I told him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's definitely it's a lot easier to come back with the freeze, obviously, yeah. than than rally scoring. And I've had I've definitely had my share both of freeze comebacks and regular comebacks. So. Yeah, just as many as you probably had the same try. Like you'll have a crazy comeback, and then you'll have like a heartbreaking. Just how did that happen? So, yeah, I've but that's played, up there. I've only played like four tournaments with the freeze. Uh, that's true. I've been huh? Out for yeah. so long. Yeah. <laughs> so freeze hasn't gotten me yet, actually. Yeah, but well, freeze or no freeze, you're almost in my boat now. How many uh, tournaments do you have? A- what for AVP? <sighs> oh, dude, I have. I don't know. I've played. I played three last year, but. But like five of my last seven that I've played or eight have been have been like injured or coming back yeah. from injury, you know. Yeah, I was so not. I have I have averaged maybe like two or three a year, maybe. This year okay. you did twenty sixteen, four, five. You did Huntington. What did you play Huntington? In the semis. Huntington, New York. Um, Ch- Chicago. No Chicago. Huntington, New York, Hawaii. Because Reed and Trevor lost to Paul and Miles. I, I played remember. Huntington, New York, Hawaii. That's it. I was in... I mean, oh, yeah, you were out for Chicago. Somewhat injured in Hawaii. Just because <laughs> my hand uh, wasn't yeah. working. Uh, healthy for the other two. But, yeah. Uh, okay, you're going to be in my boat, yeah. almost. I feel like <laughs> I'm not even on the AVP tour. Yeah. That is a bummer. Especially now that kind of the... The money and everything has gone down on the international, and now it's going up on the AVP, yeah. so mm-hmm. it, it makes it that much more painful, almost. So if you don't do well overseas, and then you're missing out on those AVP paychecks, it's like, it's yeah. a bummer now. Yeah. When, when we were practicing, and you were like, oh, well, me and John are going to be back in the qualifier, like, I thought you were joking. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I kind of like, somebody told me that, like, because I've, I've never, like, looked at AVP points or anything like that. Um, and someone told me I might be in the qualifier and then I went to the website and like looked it up and I was like, uh, yeah, I'm going to be in the qualifier yeah. or like right on the cusp. Um, and a bunch of changes had to happen. I think like, like, uh, Rosie and Ricardo had to up break up. I wild card up. situation there for sure. For Chicago? Oh no, for Hawaii. Oh, for yeah, Hawaii. For yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Both of them, we were the one seed and like oh. real close and like <laughs> yeah <laughs> didn't want to give us a wild card no one likes watching me and john though so i know <laughs> i know Dude, they weren't Hiding giving gets, us one Hiding gets no love no love whatsoever the whole time we played together too for some reason he just i mean he's a he's a curmudgeon out there yeah he's a little bit of a he's not dancer sure. <laughs> but anybody anybody who knows who appreciates the game of beach yeah exactly likes to watch Hiding. that's why it's like so surprising but like for a lay person at the tournament you're not exactly going to cheer People who are studying the game and, like, I mean, players. Every, a lot of people are watching yeah. footage of hide and play. Yeah. How the heck does he kill the ball without spiking? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what does this man do? <laughs> Pokes and weird, like, sideways yeah. line shots. How yeah. does he do that? Back to the line. Yeah. <laughs> Hyden's funny, though, because, like, he'll just shoot for, like, an entire tournament. And then all of a sudden, he'll just hammer like in a final, like even the final Hawaii is just he annihilating his jump up. serve, yeah. crushing balls, and you're just like, where did this come from? He knows. He's it. a sneaky. He sees when people start playing it, and then right when he gets you to step, that's why like when you see him finally hit, it always like chesters guys, like yeah. hits them in the chest, yeah. or, like blows them up because they're always stepping, and he just catches them. Yeah, moving. Then Freaking smart, the man has smart a dude. super fast arm too, yeah. so it's really yeah. it just looks like a cut shot's coming and whoop, whoop. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's just like that indoor yeah. low ball offense yeah. that he ran. Still the same. How uh, how weird was it being back in the quali? Like it had only been like a, it hadn't been that long ago since you won her most. So. Well, we still <laughs> yeah. there's still uh, world tour qualies going on. So, yeah, uh, I've been in plenty of qualies but the avp quality it's a little different for sure yeah. i mean i hadn't been in one since i'd have to check the date um but me and aaron mansfield maybe 2009 something like that um yeah it had been a while but i will say we, we never dropped a set in the qualifier me and aaron back in the day and then my first qualification was with Derek olsen i actually found a video of it nice. um somebody <laughs> sent it to me and that was 2008 i think so, yeah, it had been quite a while, but uh, 
honestly, it was kind of like a a good thing because I, I had kind of a rough last season and like health problems, like calf issue, getting used to the baby and everything. And right. I almost felt like I needed like a rebirth. And, yeah. uh, and so honestly, at first I was super bummed and then I was like, oh, this, this is good for me. I have to like remember what it's all about, see what everybody else has to go through every tournament, stop being all like high horse just yeah, to go and um, cares about the qualifier, but yeah. just to get back in there, it was kind of a nice thing and super stressful for sure. Cause I think John and I went maybe down one set to zero, the round to get in, in Chicago. And we're just like, Oh crap. <laughs> like, <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it ended up being a really kind of rewarding experience. And, uh, I don't know, a reminder of like the love and like the grind that is the game, which you can forget sometimes is, as sure. you know, yeah. and you'll probably find out yeah. <laughs> if you start traveling enough. Yeah. So, and well, then you came out of Kuali and make the finals in Hawaii, which was awesome. I know you're still yes. a little bummed to uh, bummed. to let that one go, but like I think that you, know, you and John making the finals probably, I want to say probably exceeded some expectations. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those things. Like we for sure, because we played together last year, had a pretty good year. Yeah. Um, we definitely knew we could make the finals, but yeah, it's a question of it's hot in Hawaii. John's older. I've been shaky, not in the best shape this last year. We're playing on hard pack sand. Um, and we lost our freaking first round match (laughs) in the same exact fashion. We lost the final. We're up 2015, won the first set easy up 2015 in the second set and Troy and Tim come back and beat us and then the same exact thing happened in the final but yeah it was more just like could our bodies keep up right um i think we had the confidence that that we could do it yeah so, yeah that's but. definitely a nice thing playing with a guy like Hayden who's so experienced is like he's never rattled never like you know he doesn't ride the highs and lows really like you know exactly what you're gonna yeah. get at practice in a match like, yeah he's probably the most steady player there is. Yeah, yeah, he's he's awesome. Yeah, and that's super nice. Like, mentally, as a partner, like, you can just, like, rely on that and know that, like, if you do your job, he's going to do his, and you're good to go. Yeah, for sure. In other ways, it can be draining playing with him, but... <laughs> a lot of power. He's going to ride you. <laughs> he's going <laughs> to yeah. ride you. He's going to ride you. He's going to shrug his shoulders sometimes. Give you a little bit of the Raji. But apparently that, well. yeah, yeah. I mean, Raji did that all the time. So apparently it's a, it's a winning trait. So <laughs> speaking, speaking of Raji... We're going to pause here for a quick break to hear from our sponsors. And as always, before we get to our sponsors, just want to give a shout out to all of you who are listening. uh, We've been doing this for a little bit more than two years now, so cannot appreciate you guys more. If you uh, anytime you share it out with your friends, uh, whenever you subscribe, whenever you download, whenever you listen, whenever you talk about it or just come up to us at tournaments or whatever, reach out via Instagram, Facebook, email, whatever it may be. Uh, We cannot appreciate it more. So appreciate all you guys the listeners and of course we do appreciate the sponsors without either the listeners or the sponsors there is no show for try and i to have um so appreciate all of you guys and and the first sponsor of course goes to wilson who makes the best ball in the game has always made the best ball in the game and now that it's off season it is definitely time to fill up on your new volleyballs the uh the new wilson optics should be on sale to the general public in january uh until then the old balls will be on discount pretty much everywhere you can find them so if you're not picky about the type of wilson ball you're playing definitely load up on some older ones or wait till january be a great little belated christmas present to whoever you need uh to grab a new bag of balls at wilson volleyball by far the best ball in the game and and i think you can ask pretty much any player we've all played with the molten we've played with the mikasa we've played with the spalding wilson kicks all their butts by far easily Now, for sponsor number two, the guys who keep Try and I alive, at least our knees, uh, Firefly Recovery. I wear these on the planes pretty much everywhere I go, so you can have some pretty gnarly travel days. Like I had a 27-hour one to a Norseka and put on some Firefly Recoveries. I actually fell asleep with them on and woke up, and my knees were feeling so good because it keeps the blood moving even though you are totally stagnant. So it just sends these little pulses of electricity to keep the blood moving and and you recover way faster so when you get off the plane it's not like you're totally stiff um you're, you're way looser and your your travel time like the amount of recovery you need after travel reduces dramatically because you have the firefly recovery on 
I appreciate all those guys for keeping us healthy, for keeping our our volleyball bags loaded up with brand new volleyballs. And last but not least, shout out to Pacific Coast Wealth Management. And here's our Pacific Coast Wealth Management Olympic update. Leading the Olympic race on the men's side, no shocker here, is Norway's Anders Mole and Christian Sorum. The phenoms from Norway. Uh, number two, the only guys who really seem to have their number a little bit is Russians Vyacheslav Krasilnikov and Oleg Stoyanovsky. Number three, Alisson from Brazil making a comeback. Him and Bruno looked pretty brutal after Rio, but now him and Alvaro Filo are number three in the world in the Olympic ranks, followed by Evandro and Alisson's partner Bruno Schmidt. Uh, German wonder kids, uh, Julius Talley and Clemens Vickler are number five. Uh, for the American side, however, Triborn and Trevor Crab are still leading the U.S. They are number 11 uh, in the world, number one in the U.S. Uh, they have 5,960 points, and they are just above Taylor Crab and Jake Gibb at 5,700. Our third American men's team is Phil Dahlhauser and Nick Lucena. They have 5,360 points. Now, for our Pacific Coast Wealth Management update on the women's end, this is an American heavy ranking. So after Brazil's Rebecca Cavalcanti and Ana Patricia Silva, uh, who have 8,800 points uh, at number one in the world, we have Alex Kleinman and April Ross. Coming in at number five in the world rankings, Olympics-wise, are Kerry Walsh Jennings and Brooke Sweat. Uh, number seven, Kelly Clays and Sarah Sponsel. Number nine, Kelly Larson and Emily Stockman. And still in the race, to be totally honest, are Sarah Hughes and Summer Ross. They still have eight finishes, so if they get four more, they'll get the required 12. It is an uphill battle, but they are still in the race. So that is your update from Pacific Coast Wealth Management. That is your update from the sponsors. Try and I love all you listeners, love all you sponsors, and now we will get back. Back to your regularly scheduled programming on Sandcast. You've played with like pretty much every. Uh, you've played with the best, def- all the best defenders in the last like decade of our sport, or yeah, in the U.S. Right? We got to go down now. Rodney, Nick, uh, I mean Reed, yeah, um, Hayden, Billy. Who are we missing in that? Casey Rosie. Patterson. Casey. I played with Rosie a little bit. Okay, <laughs> not a bad list. <laughs> no, no, no. I've been I've been very fortunate. Um, yeah, and they're all like, it's just cool. I mean, it's not that I w- was able to watch so much beach growing up, but I was definitely a fan and aware of all the players, especially in college and everything. So to get a chance to play with all those guys and kind of, yeah. and everyone's so different, the way they approach the game, the way they are on the court, the way they take care of themselves. Um, you see all these different ways to succeed, and, and I think I've been really fortunate and and lucky just to to get to see all these different guys who are masters at their craft in different ways. Yeah. So, and um, on so on. I think maybe Saturday night, uh, or maybe yeah, Saturday night. Uh, Todd Rogers was inducted into the CBVA Hall of Fame, and so in his speech, he he brought you up because um, he was just kind of going through all the guys he's playing with and how much he appreciated it. And he was like, he said it was really cool that he got to play with you because. He, he like coach. kind of unintentionally recruited you because your mom or you sent in a video of you like just my mom dunking. Yeah, <laughs> huh. they didn't appreciate the volleyball videos. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, Todd, Todd's probably the reason I went there because uh, I think I applied to Santa Cruz, San Diego, Santa Barbara, just like a D one, two, and three. I would have gone wherever. Right. Uh, but Todd saw the basketball video my mom sent without my knowledge, <laughs> and it was just me like dunking and blocking shots and stuff. <laughs> And he was just like, oh, this guy's an athlete. Like, I don't care about the volleyball stuff. We can get him mm-hmm. where he needs to be. So, so he kind of advocated for me and ensured that I had a spot on the team uh, yeah. when I walked on. So, it's, yeah, it's it was, such it was a crazy. cool story. Yeah. And then that you ended fun. up like becoming like a really dang good player at yeah. Santa Barbara. Yeah, yeah. You were, he like, left conference like what first, second year? Maybe. Yeah, I think I was all. By the time I got there, something I my freshman year. Yeah. I got some, like, yeah, first or second team all conference, my second and third year, and my fourth year. All or no, sorry, third year was when we had a good team. That's when I got the first team all American, which I was yeah. super fired up about. I think I came in two years after you. Because so, I remember playing you and, on, and knowing your name and like being like, oh, this guy's supposed to be gnarly. And then, yeah, you were. What year did you freaking, go? 2008 was my first year. So that, maybe that was my last year. Was Menzel? Yeah, playing? Menzel was there. Yeah, that was my Menzel's senior year. Minor, yeah. 
Oh, that was your senior year, yeah. That was my senior that year. It. Yeah, when I, I tried to switch to a outside hitter and then destroyed my shoulder in our first match back to the middle. <laughs> but it was so fun because I, I got, like, every set. And so I would, as a middle, I would have, like, 35 attempts and, like, oh, yeah. close to 30 kills in a couple matches. It was so much fun. And we'd be running, like, the pump one because oh, yeah. people would commit every time. So <laughs> that year was really fun, actually. And then that group of guys ended up almost winning a championship. Um, Menzel, Vince that Devaney. Was, they beat us in the Final Four when we were the oh, yeah. one seed. <laughs> yeah. Menzel's my year, so, yeah, we played him all four years. And he ended every once you left, he got every single set for <laughs> three years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, guys, guys, an impressive physical specimen. Have you seen that photo athlete. of him? No, blocking. I don't know. Oh, that you know, like, you know, a, Jeff. That photo. I don't think I do. That photo is against us. In that's the, a, yeah. There's in a the photo of him. Tournament. Just like swatting a shot or something and a block, and his yeah, Tony it's was just like, like right here on the net. <laughs> it's like unbelievable. Like close to belly button, really at the top of the tape. Yeah, it, it pretty much went like international. That photo, because I remember yeah. playing overseas and they're like. Oh, you're American? Do you know Jeff Menzel? Like, Menzel? <laughs> Out of all the people? <laughs> yeah. And they, like, pulled up the picture. I'm like, yeah, yeah that, that's my team. Yeah, she's playing against <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he's a freak. And then, oh, you went pro overseas, indoor for a while. Um, what ended up, so, I know you had a heart condition, right? Yeah, still, yeah, is I it, have. How, is that, like, still ongoing? Or Yeah, so, actually, right now, every year I, uh, do like cardiac MRIs, check it. Essentially, there's like certain numbers and indicators that I don't want to happen. So, right. but I check it every year to monitor and make sure I'm not taking like a unnecessary risk. Um, so I'm doing all that stuff right now. Um, but yeah, it's something I have to keep tabs on. So that's why I stopped playing indoor. Okay. So, it was actually I was I was in Germany. Uh, I played two years in Greece, two years in Italy. And then I went to play at uh, Unterhaching in Germany. Okay. Um, and they actually, for whatever reason, they did echoes. Like most teams did the EKGs, your heart. Um, I think maybe because there have been some sudden deaths in uh, volleyball or in Germany or something, they actually did an image of the heart. So they, like, pulled me in after a practice. I was there for three weeks. And they're like, don't be alarmed, but you should stop playing volleyball and stop playing sports for the rest of your life. And like, it's not a big deal. <laughs> don't be alarmed. And I was like, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so that's when I stopped playing indoor. Um, went back to Connecticut. I studied for the GMAT. Um, got all ready to try and go to business school. Um, but I saw at the same time was seeing a bunch more doctors. Um, and they all kind of cleared me. They're like, all right, you're close. You got to watch it. Um, maybe don't bench press a thousand pounds. And right, like, right. that might be a little risky, but... But playing should be totally fine. Just keep tabs on it. So that's kind of, I've been in holding pattern and I guess just enjoying the opportunity to play like a second life ever since. Yeah. So has it ever like flared up and been a problem since? No. Um, no, it's something like if I didn't hear about it from the doctors, I, I would have had no idea. So yeah. um, it turns out though, it was, it was something that's like, it's called a bicuspid aortic valve. So instead of like three leaflets in your heart, I have two. So it spits a little bit of blood back. Um, so it's not quite as efficient. Um, and then that can also make your aorta enlarge. So that's kind of what I'm watching. It's like how big the aorta gets. Okay. But I would have never known. Like it's one of those things in retrospect, I'm like, well, when I sit for long periods of time and stand up, I get dizzy. Like right. maybe that's associated. And if I'm out of shape, I always felt like it was harder for me. Like the first couple of weeks, maybe that's associated. Maybe it's not. Right. But I never would have known. So, yeah. which is good though, because I mean, I could have maybe, yeah, you kept playing, it, yeah, kept pushing it. Things got bad, and mm -hmm. and that's when uh, that's when people have those you know heart attacks and and die on the court. So, yeah. so I'm very very fortunate to have found it. Yeah, was it when you heard that? Like, how much of you wanted to stay in the game versus? Because I feel like that was probably a tough mental battle to have between. Okay, well, I can kind of you know put my education to use and start a life where I'm not risking my life every time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was tough. It's it's tough. Like anytime you're just pulled out of something that you're super focused on, and and I was having a a decent amount of success and played on team, made a decent living, and like I really liked where I was at. So it was super a big time bummer to have the rug pulled out and um 
but it was kind of good. So I think if, if now, like if, if I take this round of MRIs and next week they're like, well, you know, you got to watch it, you got to stop, or maybe you need a surgery. Now I'm like, now I'm prepared for it. Um, so I think that was the best part of it is now like I'm aware of the situation. I've learned to live with it. Um, every year that I get to play is a gift. So, so that's kind of where I'm at now. That's it. And then what your transition, how did the transition work from playing indoor to business school to playing beach? Because I know you played a little, like, I mean, you didn't play it growing up, that's for sure, in Connecticut. I played a little right? bit in college. College, okay. So, um, Santa Barbara. There's a guy, some beach, beach guys listening might know him, Ben Brockman. Um, he was, I think he was one of the best, like, youth players growing up. He ended up being uh, cursed with his height. <laughs> He's a smaller guy, but he was a libero at Santa Barbara. Absolutely loved beach, and he got me into it. So, so I played, probably my last three summers at Santa Barbara, we played like five or six tournaments. Um, we'd go out to the beach every day and train and play. So that's kind of when I, I was like, oh, this is fun. And I think as a middle blocker, we all think we're better than just like playing half the game and right, totally. not passing. And, and, yeah. I, and this was like an outlet for me to pass the ball, set the ball. Go prove it to yourself. Yeah, right spike here. and yeah. yeah, do all like the fun parts of volleyball. So, Right. Yeah. And then after, uh, what made you make the decision like after the, all the health concerns, the heart stuff, to be like, I'm going to choose beach rather than go back to indoor? A lot of it. So, so I ended up, I didn't spend much time with the national team uh, for various reasons. Um, but, yeah, I think Spira got hired as the head coach. I knew him a little bit. He coached me on the youth national team way mm-hmm. back when. So I told him, hey, like, uh, can I get in the gym? And told him the situation. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, come train for the summer. So I went there the summer of 2013. Uh, yeah, 2013. Um, was in there. It was kind of a tough spot. Because I was just getting back into it, so I didn't get like I wasn't gonna get a spot on the World League roster or anything like that. And there was like 20 middles in the gym, um, and at that same time, uh, there was some beach guys working out at the ASC in Anaheim. So I saw Nick in there. I think I did a little Google search, and I was like, "Oh, he's playing with Hayden. Like, what's going on with this?" And, and so I just saw him in the gym. I'm like, "Hey, man! Like, like if you ever wanna." you know, a big goofy blocker to make the transition. Like I'm down to play on the other side of it going, Oh, I didn't play with Nick. (laughs) Yeah. 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 The mirror. So we both benefited benefited from that. Um, but yeah, but, but so part of the, back to the original question, like part of it was, um, I think a lot of people had found out like, like, uh, it was like semi big in the Italian league I played in, like, I think some people accused my team of being negligent, like with having me on their team, like in yeah. Verona, I think. Um, but people knew that I had this heart issue and had to stop playing. So, mm-hmm. so all of a sudden I went from like being of a certain caliber and certain teams wanting me to like people being like, well, we'll give you a spot for like not right. a lot of money. You have to kind of work your way up and prove that you're healthy and all this stuff. So, so I didn't necessarily want to do with that because if, if you're not making a lot of money indoor, it's like not a lot of money at all. Yeah, so a waste of your time. <laughs> and, and I had always loved the beach and wanted to make the switch. So I was like, oh, maybe this is a chance because the AVP was coming back. I saw Nick. He was kind enough to let me go to the beach with him and play with him a couple times. Uh, so, yeah, I was, just, I was just fortunate timing, I guess. Yeah. So, that I was in the gym, that Nick was there, that he was playing with Hayden. So, yeah. yeah. And then, what, a year later? We met in the Huntington Finals, me and Hayden versus you and Nick, right? 2014? Well, yeah, that was that first year. Yeah. Um, no, that, that was 2013. That was 13? Oh, the first so, yeah. year, yeah. So it was the end At of that end, summer. Right. They okay. had all the AVP events. Yeah. And, yeah. And got that's when... Got victory right away. Yeah, I got Damn the it. W. We kept losing to Jake and Casey um, in, like, tough fashion. I think we made three <laughs> finals that year. Um and then we finally beat him in the semis of Huntington and had you guys, we, you guys should have won that match for sure. Like you were handling yeah. us in the first. Yeah. I think we came back, rattled off a few points and maybe I won on like an overpass or something, overset yeah, by I John, remember. which he never does. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you guys beat us 21, seven or 21, nine or 21, seven in the second set. 
Oh, and I was cramping. I, I do remember that. Cramping real oh. bad. And I was drinking a beer. Like Damn. in the little smart car thing. Yeah. It was smart car. <laughs> so it made it it made it really easy to just be like Whatever. We're gonna lose this set. Like <laughs> drink my beer, don't cramp, get ready for set three. Yeah. I think the third set was pretty close, but yeah, yeah that was we had a few battles 15, with you guys. 12 or something. Yeah. I think we played you in a Norseka final in Chula Vista. Oh yeah, you guys beat us. And we had too. a comeback in the third set. Damn it. Um and we played you in the semis of Salt Lake City, which was my first AVP since 2009. Semis of Salt Lake? Or no, no, no. To go to the semis. We played you and John. I remember because I like... I don't even remember that one. You guys were digging me off the court at the end. And I was, we were siding out at 14 and 13. And I was like, what do I do? Like, John, <laughs> John's in my head. Yeah. And it was like the worst shot ever, but it worked because he had no idea. It was like I came in really hard, like I was gonna hit deep angle, and he was gonna dig me easy, and just did like, like a, <laughs> like like a line <laughs> shot that went down like ten feet inside the side. Oh. But John was like on his heels, and oh. I was like, yeah, oh, <laughs> great shot, by frozen, me. <laughs> great shot because it worked. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> They don't yeah. all have to be pretty. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we've had we've had plenty had of battles through the years. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Lots of them. Hawaii, that was that was a gimme. So you guys we took advantage. Well, we were playing well, but we took a yeah. your hand was hurting. I was I was mad because I didn't feel like I was playing well. Like I just didn't feel like I, I mean I had I hadn't played in a while and my hand was new ball and new uh whatever. I had that thing in my hand, but at the end I was like, they actually played a good match though. So I'll be yeah, we, okay we played. We, it wasn't we like did you play guys pretty steady. Like yeah. we would have won had my hand not been hurt. It was like yeah. it would have been a gnarly battle. Yeah, yeah. But like you guys were making good plays, so I was like, all right, whatever. But it kind of pissed me off. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Which is why I trained for the last like two months for this Mexico event just to finish strong. Yeah. So I could get that taste out of my mouth. Yeah. So I get a small part of the. Yeah. Take a little chip of that. <laughs> <laughs> you had a. Uh, you had a pretty interesting year that, like, you ended it with John because you and Reed had played a fair amount together. Yeah. Right. What was the plan coming in? Because there are still, like, I mean, there's a ton of events internationally, you know, this next year. So it's not like you guys were totally out of the Olympic race. Yeah, it's not totally. We wouldn't have been totally out, but. Uh, a stretch, but. A it would have been very difficult. Yeah. Um, especially, yeah, because I don't know. I mean, yeah, it would have been feasible, but there would have been, what, one five-star remaining? Yeah. Ishtad. And, uh, Does Stad count? No. Doesn't? Okay. Rome is the only five-star that counts. Okay. Yeah, there's one. Yeah. And, and I've been talking to people uh, when I was in Mexico, and I've heard of, like, three events that are either canceled or changing. Oh, really? Downgrading. Yeah, it's, or, <laughs> yeah, it's not it's pretty right now. It's changing quick, yeah. the FIVB schedule. Okay. But, uh, yeah, it was a situation... The way the points are now, it's a little bizarre, at least compared to the, the only other time I was involved in the Olympic qualifications. The five stars and the world champs count like a huge, huge. hugely disproportionate to the, what a normal tournament the four stars are worth. So I think the fact that we didn't have any, five, we didn't have a world champs finish, we didn't have good five star finishes. Um, made it so essentially we'd have to like win every tournament or somewhere yeah. medal in every tournament. Right. Um, going forward and, and yeah and I feel like we had had enough evidence gathered so far that we weren't <laughs> the best fit um, and obviously it worked out for him <laughs> so because yeah, his right. first tournament <laughs> yeah. um, he and Trevor and I actually I thought I was like man Reed and Trevor like they're gonna be playing free and loose yeah exactly like, I was they're both like great all-around players and I was, and I was like they're gonna the be dangerous time. I was like, oh, great. Oh, every, <laughs> yeah, how was that? Those little things are just, everything's just going their way. I was a little annoyed that uh, Phil and Nick played so bad in the semi against them. Dude, I was I like, know. at least make them work for it. I know. <laughs> Phil, like, Phil never beating, hits balls. Beating in Phil in Manhattan is like a very difficult yeah. thing to do over the yeah. years. Like, and we've all played really well yeah. and still lost. Yeah. And then that one was just like, here you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was, that was cool, though. Um, How'd that feel for you, watching your guy? <laughs> I, I, I changed my mentality around for the final because I knew I had to, or else I would go crazy. <laughs> I was watching it, you know, they lose to K 
when they lost, I was like, yeah, whatever. It's not good, not bad. It doesn't really matter. Um, watching them play, you know, deep down, I'm like, I'm like, kind of like, eh, if they lose, it makes me look good, feel good. I actually wanted Trevor to rest anyway, you know? <laughs> you know, if, if he would like go one and done, I'd be like, oh, it's perfect. Like, rest up, dude. We'll both rest right now and we'll have a great end to the year. Uh, but they just kept balling and, and I could see like there was no pressure. Like Trevor wasn't playing like tight, like yeah, come on, we got it. Don't make errors, Reed. It was like both of them just didn't yeah, care yeah, yeah. about what if the other guy did something. No, no, I right saw or wrong. I saw the same in Reed. Like he was he was just super free, loose. He and Trevor were having fun and yep. it's one of those things in beach, it's like it's so hard to to manufacture that. Yeah, exactly. Um but but when you have it and you have not not a care in the world, it's like it makes a huge difference. I always yeah. think of also uh, when Matt Furbringer came back and won Manhattan. With Casey. Oh yeah, it's exactly the And like same he, thing. I think he struggled his whole career. Then maybe he had a he number had, of wins. He but, had never won Manhattan. But was always kind of like right there. Yeah. And then he played like unbelievable. Yeah. Like he was so good. And in that final, he and Casey were awesome. Um, yeah. And I was wondering, like, is it? It's just like a totally different mindset for, sure. for him. Well, plus when he was just that. grinding it out, it's like, well, I'm here to have fun. Like, if I lose, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and that's big. And if someone could figure out how to bottle that and yeah. <laughs> provide it to to athletes, it would be I think worth we a lot all of money. Try to do that, but yeah. the, know, on the flip side of it is, like, you don't want to lose to that team. You know, oh yeah, as their opponents. So I think it kind of makes them tight. You yeah. loosen up, yeah. they tighten up, and like you could see it. Like yeah. Those trickle aces are falling on your side, yeah, on their yeah. side, and, and vice versa. Yeah, it's almost like insulting. The serves like, aren't we're working so hard. Over. These guys are just like <laughs> messing around, having fun out yep. there. Yeah, exactly. And then you've never seen, like, like once a team's established, you get your scouting report yeah. on them, and you feel pretty comfortable doing what you're doing. But, yeah, Trevor and Reed, you're like, yeah. God, which side are they on? Right, like, they kept switching. <laughs> what sets are they running? Totally. Yeah. Did you but, and John have any of that? When you got together in Chicago and Hawaii, because it was like sort of a last, you know, end of season partnership, you know, a little bit, you know, you guys had played together before, you were comfortable. Um, it took a little time. Uh, <laughs> I, I would credit, I would say it probably had to do with our early exit in Manhattan, which like, I don't even think we played all that bad. Um, but there was a lot of plays here and there, especially like running John's real quick set, which I've always been really comfortable setting. But but going from not running that type of set to like jamming a ball in with yeah. your bump, um, it just took a And we didn't really, we practiced one day before the tournament and that was it. So there was definitely like a number of opportunities that were squandered from not playing together. But other than that, it was, it was kind of like riding a bike. Like it came back pretty quick and Chicago was a little bit better. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, in Hawaii, like, we felt really good. It felt just like it was 2018 again, so. And I remember um, I talked to, like, Todd and Nick, um, and both of them have obviously played with Phil, like, the best blocker maybe who's ever lived, and both of them said that, like, technically, like, that you are, like, a, one of the soundest blockers, like, the most sound blocker, like, they've ever played with. And blocking on the beach is so much different. Than indoor too. I'm surprised that they said that. Both of them. Well, yeah. you make more um, moves than so. You know, he's just a very he like just gets in your space. Yeah. But he's not going to reach as much and go low, and when and like, you get over faster. Like from in your squat to like, over and like taking yeah. that spot away, you get over faster, uh, and that's kind of deceiving as a hitter. You know, because there's so much space available yeah. and then you can take it away quickly, whereas Phil's just like. Yeah, wow, he just like, took up 75% yeah. of the court. I, I feel like the last couple of years he's been making more moves. Yeah, I, When he I was with Todd, uh, I mean, I would guess part of that is like, <clears throat> I mean, he no longer at ease just gets here. Right, exactly. But yeah, the way he and Todd played D was like so gnarly. Like they were essentially just line block every time. But Phil could, right. he's big enough and good enough. He's, I'm like a big like fan of how good, like he's so good at watching the hitter. Yeah making moves with his hands and being strong. So he could just be in a line block and, like, you think you have a sharp angle and he'll be like, oh, sharp angle hit's coming. Yeah, he's like, oh, you're telegraphing it. Now yeah. I'm going to take it. And, uh, yeah, I think he's he's the best. But I'm honored that Todd and Nick said I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm wondering because Nick was, like, your first 
sort of real beach partner. Yeah, right? and it's super funny. Nick says that. You up fast. Well, when, when we started playing, like, uh, it was just constant Nick being like, dude, what are you doing? He hated, uh, I love, like, deceptive blocks. Um, I just think they work really well. Yeah. Um, and I think people are doing, doing them more and more now. But uh, I just thought it was such an easy way to get a block. But I think as a defender, when your blocker, when there's so much responsibility on your blocker, you can feel like it kind of takes you out of the play a little bit. So I think that's how Nick felt a lot. It's like, well, I'm up there doing this thing. And like, if they just slap it line, it's an easy kill for them. He doesn't like, he likes feeling like, hey, I'm in the angle. Like I could potentially <laughs> dig all these right. hits. You block all the line. Um, but I guess in retrospect, he liked it. <laughs> we did. We had a really good defense, uh, Nick and I. Yeah, and you guys, so. like, you played really well together. That was a good partnership. You guys, Yeah, we were starting to cruise. Uh, that was my, my worst breakup. That and, was it, tough. and you can't even be mad because yeah. it was for Phil. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it sucked. It was, like, halfway through the qualification. But, yeah, I think we went. Like, we had a tough start. It was, like, 225ths. We did the country quota qualifier and then 225ths. Then, like, a 17th where we actually played well, and I was like, oh, we might get it going. Then I think we got a third and st pete the grand slam yeah and then a fourth in the world champs um and then maybe two ninths after that so so we were up to maybe the the second team i think we jumped you guys which was <laughs> our goal um <laughs> and then yeah and then phil and rosie broke up and phil snagged nick so that was that was brutal that was yeah. brutal but no like i never had any animosity towards anybody but it's still when you're in like a certain spot and then it's just like, well, no, you're not. Yeah. It's like, all right. <laughs> yeah. That was but, tough. Uh, but that's how, that's how it goes on the beach. And, I mean, I could put myself in Nick's shoes and, and totally, like, understand why you would do that. Right. Because in the end, it's a business, and you're trying to support a family and stuff, and you got to make tough decisions. So it's, it's yeah. not, it's not, yeah, it's not anything other than that. Yeah. So. And there's, uh, you guys played awesome at that World Champs. Remember, that was the one, uh, that was in the Netherlands. Yeah, right. yeah, we won uh, Amsterdam. <laughs> that was awesome because they had four different locations. So we played in uh, Dom Square, like one of the central squares in Amsterdam, and they just set up a court right there. That's awesome. And we played all our pool play there, won our pool, and then got to play up to the to semis there too. Oh, that's really cool. I didn't know they did that. Yeah, it was cool. And then we all went to The Hague, which they had like a court set up on like a barge or something. <clears throat> um so yeah, that was that was really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> You're right. Dude, I'm choking on my uh super greens. <laughs> <laughs> Little flex of leaf. Yeah, I got the powder. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> yeah, the Hague was rad. It was uh um, Was that where your pool was? Yeah. So we You guys got fifth, time. right? We got fifth. We lost Everyone got fifth. Yeah. Yeah. But that was cool. It was actually floating in front of the parliament building in like a big lake the stadium like a giant yeah, stadium that's awesome yeah that was, I've watched, that was a great tournament I've watched as many YouTube videos from that as yeah, I can yeah, yeah. Like, it looked mobbed too like those fans were great yeah I mean the Dutch were in the finals too so they were oh man that I've watched the the, the final match of that year the 2015 world champs like many times I think that's the best match I've it's seen. so good oh, oh man did you live did you stay I did not watch it live. I watched it live. It was pretty insane. Um, Baron Horse peaked young. Dude, they had the fire. <laughs> He's still, 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 yeah. still really good. Yeah. I mean, well, he was in that just shows the that, importance that of, match. of partnerships. <laughs> yeah. I mean, his new partner's good. Yeah. But, there, yeah, there's no substitute for, like, I mean, Nubrador is so cagey and just... Dude. Plays yeah. such good D. He's kind of like a Haydn. Like, he's not really the fastest. Yeah. I mean, Haydn's pretty quick, but, like, they don't play, like, a wait and get it. They, like, they show you things and they take them away. They're always, like, yeah. moving yeah. back there. Dude, and he's a hustler, too. Like, uh, they beat us 21, or, sorry, 23-21 both sets in the quarterfinals. Yeah. So, like, we were balling. Like, I thought we played, like, a great match. And... At the end of both sets, Reindeer made, like, these unbelievable plays. This, yeah. Like, we're, we're just like, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah, he, he was always better in those. Yeah. And that's huge he on got, the beach. Just better. how you are at the end of games. And yeah. he would always make crazy digs. And, yeah, just like Hayden. I mean, they, they, they keep in their back pocket, like, what's been going on throughout the match. And then they'll try and, like, 
show you something that that's maybe, right, yeah. That's what I've noticed with a lot of veterans, and you've probably noticed it because you've played with all the veterans. They save stuff for the end of the match. Yeah. It's like, oh, wow. I had uh, I had Gib 18 all, and, like, people get all proud about that. It's like, yeah. But, like, yeah, but then you'll notice a lot of the veterans... And then you lost 21-18. And, <laughs> <then he'll, laughs> yeah. and then you'll serve him. Why do you always lose? <laughs> serve him 10 balls in a row, and he'll just scud it deep line and you lose <laughs> yeah. lose the Hawaii Navy uh, yeah. God why did I'm so mad I was like John maybe we should uh, serve Taylor a few balls but like we were all over Jake all matched and then yeah. oh god <laughs> and he was Getting he, he, he was like I don't know if it was adrenaline or what but he was he was hitting some good hits yeah, no, like we could have made plays but there were like high degree of difficulty to around. stop yep. uh, oh man do the same thing uh, was that two days ago? Yesterday in Mexico in the yeah. finals, he just like steps up in the yeah. moments. He got two p- huge blocks on Robbie at the end of the match, which like no one could block Robbie the whole tournament. Yeah, and uh, everyone. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, mix. that was after like Robbie had cruised in the second set. Yeah. It was like untouchable, and then third set rolls around. Jake's just like, oh, your hard angle, got you. Yeah, at, right at the end. Yeah, but. But Robbie had been dropping those super sharp ones before that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of those things in beach as a blocker. Like, I think you have to be able to identify when somebody is, like, in the zone, even if, like, scouting report-wise it doesn't make sense. Right. If someone's, like, feeling it, you should just go somewhere else yep. and let them, call it, like, come down. Right. And that's, yeah, for Jake, like, when he's playing like that, you should just do something, either give him a totally different look or just go away from him for a yeah. few plays. So, so and then, and then that's easy. The problem solved. Jake yeah. solved. And then you just don't serve. It's fun watching Jake and Tay because I feel like everyone has, almost everyone goes at Jake, at Jake, at Jake, and then randomly someone will go at Taylor. And it's just a different, completely different dynamic. We go at Taylor a decent amount. Trevor always yeah. wants to go at Taylor too. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I don't mind going. Yeah. Because Jake seems like. I mean, his game just seems softer unless he doesn't have the shots and the... I mean, he does have... He has everything, but it's just that, like, chip off the top yeah. veteran. It's just not sexy. Yeah, not he, sexy he plays with, with you. He yeah. plays with your heart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whereas, yeah, Taylor, you're like, oh, if, if I just had my hands here, I would have jetted it. Yeah. But he's got such a fast... Time. I mean, they're both really good side-out mm-hmm. players, so it's kind of pick your poison. Yeah. It's pretty amazing how he hasn't... Uh, Jake hasn't fallen off like since like the Stein days. You know, he's just yeah. like, cruising. Well, that's the good because he's like uh, he's got one of those approaches and arm swings where like it uh, maybe if you talk to him it's different, but it looks very like effortless and like totally, yeah. the ball's here. Like he cleanly c- contacts it. He's not like grinding on his yeah, shoulder. Like he's not doing anything like this. Um, I think that's enabled him to like continue doing it at a high level. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, less is more on the beach, and he's like, he's the ultimate. Like, makes the his whole career, he's made the most out of kind of his physical attributes. He's not the highest jumper, not the hardest hitter, but but he does the things that are important. Is Has vision, hits it more? high. Yeah, yeah, he is. Like, I feel like I'm the same size as him when I'm next to him. He's gotten skinnier over the years, I think too. But then, like, when you go up with the net, he's like got this six inches. Yeah, like, his oh, arms are so long. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and he blocks, like, rule, like, that style as opposed to, like, mm-hmm. reaching, which gives you a little extra. So, yeah, he's, he's good. <laughs> God, Hawaii. Hawaii just... <laughs> Dude, I have so never... my, I have Manhattan where, where Casey hit a low seam angle for the match. We had match point. Oh, yeah. Manhattan told That's... me if, if, the, if the set dies inside at all, dive on it. If it doesn't, touch go just go touch the highlight i'll be angle and he thought it died inside and i didn't yeah. so i let him hit dude, it dude hyden is all about it. the contingencies right yeah <laughs> like yeah with jake it was like oh if the like well you're blocking lines it's hard if to play the set's that. inside at all then you gotta take the sharp angle yeah i'm like oh, okay like, so take everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> that exact thought. I remember having that with Hayden a lot. Like, so take everything. Yeah. So just every, <laughs> just if it everything. Goes here, then yeah. block it. If it goes here, then block it. Yeah. If it shoots, then swat it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I'll do everything else. <laughs> Oh yeah, and you, yeah, I remember watching that. That was a good, really good match. Oh, dude. But I was that like, oh, I'll try. It's gonna, today. yeah. And then because what did you two short line shots? Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. So Ooh. before that, for them to come back, they ran fours on me, and I just freaking hit lines. Yeah. I got, I got my list too. Everyone has haunting yeah. matches. I, I'm feeling uh, the worst for uh, Carrie and Brooke right now. I don't know if you were able to watch their match. Yeah. No, what, the Aussies, what happened? It was tough. They, so they went up 11-6 in the third and then made the 12-8 switch. Um, and the only point they scored after that was when Australia missed a serve. Oof. And they lost 15-13. I stopped watching because I thought they won. And I was like watching on Yeah, TV like that's a point where you know you what? Won. That, sound, that sounds like me and John in Florida in 2018. <laughs> um, I think we had a 12 8 switch, and we might have had a swing for 13 7 to go to the semis yeah. with the five star, and we lost. Oh. And it was like all my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of those, like, yeah. Oh, I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. That's when I was out, I think, right? Uh, no, was that one? You think, yeah, yeah you still I was weren't playing. Yeah. Whatever. I was there for some reason watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was so that was very similar to Carrie and Brooke, so I feel for them very strongly. We play a lot of matches. Like I feel like we're gonna have a lot of Oh yeah, yeah. yeah just they happen to everyone. When they're on the cusp of something you want so badly, like a victory of a yeah. tournament or like name on that pier. And then dude, this year, Casey on the right side served him. And he hit freaking low seam, and Trevor blocked it this time. And got on the pier. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, well, he had Jose in there oh, telling him exactly. Oh, he's like, God. serve him line to line. So I'm blaming Hyden. Take it. <laughs> give me the right. Uh, yeah, wrong yeah, advice. You just didn't have Jose in the box. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Being a pro athlete's hard. You really gotta drop those like gnarly those things you work so hard for and then you just don't get it and you have to like forget about it and like well I'm gonna try again yeah like the freaking Olympics like we play in a sport where the best thing is like once every four years yeah if you're not mentally strong like that will torture you yeah which it is torturing me (laughs) it's torturing all of us yeah cause like I mean it does happen like to everyone on any type of scale yeah totally like I blew two straight sets against Russia in the China three star. Obviously, that's not for an AVP title or name on the pier. We were up fifteen, thirteen well, twice. Like, it always bad. hurts. Yeah. It's all yeah. relative. Like if you're putting in all this work for something, and then yeah, you like fly across the world, and you have it right in your hand, and it just yeah. like slips out. And it's like almost worse. Like Mike was so nice. He's like, dude, like I could have done this. I was like, no, you couldn't. <laughs> and stop being so nice about it. <laughs> like just making be, it worse. Just yeah. be pissed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we've all had them. But you're going out on a high note going yeah. into the off season with the bronze. Congrats. It's a year with a, a win, and that's, it helps. Yeah, and I feel like even the loss to the Dutch, like it wasn't your best match, but they also played lights out. Yeah, they were That ripping. does make they it a little bit more palatable. Of, uh, we were, they were ripping jump serves, and we were out of system, like right off the bat. And then when you're setting from off the net, high spinny balls, yeah. and the stadium lights against the giant block, it's like, it's tough. Good luck. Yeah. 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 But big finish to end the uh, Olympic race on for the year. Yeah, exactly. Good mm-hmm. vibes going into the off season. Yeah. Stoked on that. What's, uh, what's it? It's obviously like pretty close between the top three teams now. It's really close. I'm curious, have you done like a rundown? Yeah, I looked last night. There's a website that has all like the averages and everything. We're, we're basically. Jake and Taylor and us, we have we each have 12 finish. We have 13, but we've hit that 12 finish mark. And they're like 8th on the list and we're 10th or something, I think. Which doesn't They jumped really up to 8th after point. the... Phil and Nick are like 20th, but it's because they only have 10 finishes. Would they... Are they like, Basically, for all intents and purposes, the first place team? Jake and Taylor are... Because yeah, Nick and Phil have the best go, like big tournament finishes, right? 
Because the four stars, you can assume. Try you have the, Trev have the best. Have you have the, the fourth in the world. Maybe? Yeah. But they, they have a fifth <laughs> in worlds, a fourth in Vienna. Yeah. What was their stat? Ninth, I think. Ninth. Um, okay, yeah, so it's, it's close. It's, it's really close. Basically, we're all, I, I believe it's like, let's say we all have like around 6,500 points total. And our averages are, or we're all within like 50 points. Yeah. Of each other. Yeah. Within that 6,500 6, points. So it could be. It's going to all come finished. down to the last five star. It comes down to I averages. And like, we're all very close, yeah. So it's like a yeah. fresh start going into the next year. Yeah. Which it does help that, like, out. you have your 12, and now you're just dropping and adding. Yeah, it's better It's better to be dropping yeah. than to be adding. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So there's a little advantage there. Yeah, because I know that Carrie and Misty, they used to just front load their schedule and then just pretty much qualify, kind of like what April and Alex did. And then they just, like, kind of had a pretty calm yeah. year going into the Olympics. So it wasn't super stressful and crazy. Uh-huh. Not that you're in that position, but I think it is it's easy good to do to that when you're load. superior to everybody. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But what uh, what are your plans this off season? Your Instagram account has been fantastic these last couple of weeks. Been trying to get a little active on there. Yeah, there it's go. been great. The partner search on Instagram, uh, keep it up. <laughs> check, out, check out Lord Burner, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's funny because my wife like forced me to start watching The Bachelor. She always has it on, so <laughs> it just like popped in my head. I was like, this is a lot like The Bachelor. <laughs> just trying to find the, a mate for next. <laughs> Next season, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's super weird in beach. It's like uh, it's very much like a relationship and stuff, yeah. and I'm just like oh, you hang out this, with everyone. This guy is really good at this, and, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know if we get along that well. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty funny. So, how would yeah. you treat me in this situation? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you like actually started kind of reaching out to people and seeing who might be? Interesting, because I feel like there are a couple like power brokers, and then from yeah, there, a few the trailers, down effect but, will uh, begin. Essentially, like it's gonna. I'm waiting for it. Goes from the top down usually. Yeah. And I've been fortunate enough that I've been like one of the guys people would wait on in the past. Now I'm waiting on uh, see what happens with Chase and Casey, because they split. Then there's other shuffles going up the chain. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I have like. I mean, I, I've been spent. I've been enjoying like not being super focused on that stuff this off season. Yeah. But it's still like I kind of have a bunch of people in mind and have uh, have chatted with a, a few different people. So. Free agency. Yeah, well, yeah. it is. It is free agent season now. We should have a. We should have that covered a little better. We should. Mr. Journalist. I can <laughs> just, <laughs> just get a big board. You need a big board. Yeah. But it would be interesting. Yeah, we should do a little. Show. Get it up on the chalkboard here. The names. We and get the little magnet strips. Yeah. And if we move that this would guy be here, hilarious. That slides here. Oh my god, we need that to do a free agent show. And have show. like, uh, yeah, have like. Putting the chalkboard over. Travis here. Yeah. predictions, tries predictions. Have your guest predictions. That would be hilarious. (laughs) I always feel like kind of weird sometimes because when I hear like rumors on the beach, I'm like, "Ah, I can't write about it. (laughs) Or then no one's going to talk to me anymore. Oh, yeah. That's true. Fine line. But if we just like, just do it based on nothing but conjecture. Right. And me and you can just like riff on who would be good with who. (laughs) (laughs) That would be fun. Maybe we'd make it happen. That would be fun. Yeah. 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 We'll see, people. We'll see. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, try, I know that you have uh, USA to go to. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to keep you guys too long. And Theo, we've had you in here for a while. We appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, good time, time. Yeah. Off season, we can make it work. Yeah, any time. <laughs> taking a while. Yeah. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll have you back on, though, for sure. Yeah. Got to make another uh, partner search. Yeah, when you pick now. your partner. Now that I know it's well received. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep it up. And uh, we do have one question that we ask every guest at the end of each episode. Okay. Is if you had to give one piece of advice to an up and coming beach volleyball player, what would that piece of advice be? One piece of advice yeah. regarding anything? Yeah, whatever. Oof. Mm, I don't know. Have fun. <laughs> Simple. 
words. That's a tough one. I didn't from the guy who's know that was coming. Every great defender of our game, and from a lot of the curmudgeons. Well, in the what game. I've learned, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is a part of me that would like to play with like a more enthusiastic, younger type because yeah. I have not experienced that. Just all not the once. Old, yeah, the just old, uh, just all like I've already done Yodas. it. What can you do, like you, you type of guys? Yodas, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need a Luke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're out there, Luke, <laughs> message Lord Bruner. Still available, everyone. <laughs> Still available. Just lost five pounds, too, so oh, nice. there you go. look good. And, uh, Got rid of the dad yeah. bod. Yeah, it's, it's going down. Nice. <laughs> Finally figuring out the baby, so I'm ready, ready to rock, guys. So Here we go. Reach out to me. All right, see ya. Appreciate it, bud. Yeah, thanks, guys. Cheers.